Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about my spinning. I'm going to tell you about new colors and I want to talk to you about back to school. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday and we talk about something to do with knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing. Today we're going to talk a lot about spinning. We're going to talk about back to school. I have back to school on my mind, obviously, because this past week my kids have gone back to school. My youngest just started kindergarten which is like a whole new adventure. And she's been doing this whole gradual entry thing, which is for those of you who don't know, when you start kindergarten here, um, they start you very, very gradually. So on the first day, you just go for a little bit of time and the next day you go for a little bit more and the next day you go for a little bit more until finally after I think about a week and a half, you're actually doing full days of school. And so the first day of school, Nina was in class for about 45 minutes <laughs> and then the next day was like an hour and so it's just very very gradual but I think that she doesn't need the gradual entry I think it's more like gradual entries for the parents like I need the gradual entry of you know having her go somewhere else so <laughs> for those of you guys who have not seen we are also doing a big back to school thing for the school of sweet georgia so the school of sweet georgia is this online fiber art school that we created back in 2017 and we have been building out this school year over year over year adding new courses and on average i think we've been adding close to about 20 new courses every year. And so those courses uh, spread out in all different areas of the fiber arts, um, from knitting and dyeing. We did a lot of natural dyeing this past summer. We're also doing a lot of weaving classes and we have been doing a ton of spinning classes. So right now there is a promotion going on for back to school. You can enter the code back to school 2021 in the checkout at the school of sweet Georgia. And that will give you uh, 15% off either a quarterly or an annual all access pass. And so those all access passes get you into everything, all of the forums, all of the courses, all of the downloads, all of the content, everything is there. So it is back to school time and I think a lot about how September is kind of the start of a new year. I always tend to think of September as the start of a brand new everything. It's a brand new adventure, brand new set of goals, brand new set of plans and visions and aspirations. September is a really good starting place. And so one of the things that I really try to share with everyone is this feeling and this sensation that learning is never over learning is never done and i know like my kids have just started school and nina's just started kindergarten this is the beginning of a whole new world for her obviously but there's so much to learn always and so i'm thinking right now because i'm reviewing a lot of the videos for the class that's coming out near the end of september the spinning intentional color class that i'm teaching for the school of sweet georgia and that one is all about taking color breaking it up and spinning it in different ways and all sorts of things like that but i just notice as i'm watching those videos and i'm thinking about the kind of yarn that i'm spinning and the yarn that i've been spinning over the past couple of months and i know that for myself learning is a forever process this is an ongoing forever process it doesn't matter how many years you've been spinning i feel like there's constantly things that you can do to learn and improve and push your spinning to get better and better and better and so when we were filming this past summer, we were filming also with Kim McKenna, who is a local instructor. She's a spinning instructor with tons of tons of spinning experience. I took classes from Kim probably like maybe 15 years ago when I really, when I first started spinning, I'd taken a class with her and that class happened to be about spinning synthetics, uh, synthetic fiber, things like soy silk, things like corn fiber, um, fiber made from milk byproducts, like things like that. <laughs> I took a class and I learned how to spin a lot of those things, comparing and sampling and all sorts of things like that. And so this past summer, we invited Kim McKenna to come back and film a class with us for the School of Sweet Georgia. And so her class launched this week and it's called Nuances to Spinning Better Yarns. And I feel like absolutely that the content in this class is helpful for anyone, no matter where you are in the spinning process, no matter how far you've come along in spinning, how many years you've been spinning, I feel like there's something in there that could help 
and benefit anyone. And so uh, Kim actually very generously came by and visited our studio last week and we did like a little spin-in at the studio. So many of the team members here, some of them were learning to spin for the very first time and then others of us have been spinning for a couple of years and so we all got together uh, after lunch or during lunch break and Kim came over and she sat with each one of us and like was working through, you know, what does this look like? How do you sample? What does it look like? Sample again and moving and moving, moving to towards making better and better yarn. So just doing the sampling process so that way we could get to a kind of yarn that we want to spin in order to make the kind of product that we want to make at the end of the day. So I have been using a lot of the material that I've learned from Kim's class already. And so I have been spinning a lot more yarn. I've been spinning um, specifically for a project that's going to be the Andrea Mowry Night Shift uh, shawl. So it's the bigger version of the cowl that I showed a couple of weeks ago. And so this is one of the test skeins that I've been spinning for that. Um, most of this here is the reply yarn. There's some leftover <laughs> leftovers on two bobbins. So, so that became a two ply yarn, but this is 50 grams of a three ply yarn that I'm going to be using for doing a little bit of sampling. This has just come off the bobbin, so it's not been washed or anything like that yet. So this needs to be washed and then I'm going to knit a little bit of a swatch with it, see if I like it. And if this is the kind of yarn that I like, then I'm going to keep moving forward with these techniques and these methods. Now I'm going to explain a little bit about this night shift shawl. I don't have a picture of it here right now with me, but it is the larger version of the cowl that I made. And so the cowl, I used three different colors, three hand spun yarns. Now the shawl takes six skeins. Each skein is 50 grams. And so I wanted to make something that was more cohesive. I wanted to make something that had more purples in it, more of my colors and things like that. And so we got about to dyeing a whole bunch of new colorways for fall. And so I'm going to share those with you now. We have six new colors that we are going to be putting out this fall. And some of the colors might be a little bit familiar to you just because they have come in other formats before. So we have a couple of here that are, this is called gemstones. This colorway is called gemstones. All of these samples have been dyed on the Polworth and silk. And so you can maybe see little bits of silk. You can see little streaky bits of silk and stuff there, but you can see sort of the texture of that fiber. This colorway happens to be called gemstones. So this one was available as a party of five. That's where a lot of these colors came from. Another one that came from um, the party of five is this one. This one's called tanzanite. Then we came up with two completely different colorways that I'm really excited about. This one is just really fall, it's really harvesty. I'm really liking this colorway. We called it Farm to Table. Like I'm always gonna be a big fan of sort of like the teal and the orange sort of combination. I really love that. And I happen to just love this yellow. I just love golden. Yeah, it feels really pumpkin-y pumpkin and teal-y all at the same time. Pumpkin squashes and teals, that kind of idea. And then the next idea, this one is called Midnight Feast. This one has been my absolute favorite and I've spun it up and I'm gonna show you that in just a second here. So this one is all purples and also still some of those golds, some of those pumpkin-y kind of squash yellow colors and things like that, but a lot of purple in here. And so obviously you can see this is a hundred grams of fiber. This is a hundred gram braid. And since the night shift shawl only requires 50 gram skeins and those 50 gram skeins need to be spun as three ply, I basically took this braid of fiber, I, cut it in half crosswise, and then I had two sections, 50 grams and 50 grams. So I took one of the 50 grams and I split it into three strips vertically. And then I made myself a three ply yarn. So that's my three ply yarn. So I took the other half and I spun it into a two ply yarn. So you can see this is my two ply. So you can maybe see this is a three ply, this is a two ply, and they all came from this fiber. 
So this is one of the lessons that I try to mention to everybody whenever I get a chance. And that is that when you have a color and a bright and a vibrant color in your spinning fiber, the process of spinning it will break it down and make all of those chunks of color smaller and smaller and smaller and more and more blended together. So if you want something that's really vibrant in your end yarn, you have to start with something that's really vibrant. If you start with a fiber that's kind of dull or desaturated or muted, at the end of the day, your yarn is going to be even more desaturated and muted and possibly muddy. Um, you can see like, obviously with this colorway, it might be a little bit more of a challenge to spin just because there are chunks of yellow and then there's chunks of purple and yellow and purple are on the opposite sides of the color wheel. So when you blend those two together, you will get sort of like a muddier color. So that's, you know, a little bit of what is going on here. But the way that I split these fibers, the goal was for the different colors to line up again. So you can see that when I actually go to knit this, there's gonna be some sections that are gonna be purely yellow, and then there's gonna be other sections that are purely purple. So the way that I spun these yarns was for the colors to realign and match back up so that we, when I go knit them, there's gonna be sections of pure yellow, pure purple, and some areas where there's a little bit of blending going on, a little bit of barber pull happening. But that's kind of what I'm doing with these braids. And I'm going to do them with all the braids, actually. I have two other braids here, and these are really interesting because they are both dyed in a gradient format, which means that we laid them in the tray to dye in a slightly different way. So that way, when you look at it, look at the braid from end to end, it's already a gradient. Okay. And so very often, you know, we'll take, um, you know, fiber that's been hand painted like this, where you can see there's yellow in multiple sections of this braid. When we want to make a gradient yarn, like one that goes from one color to the next color, to the next color, to the next color, what we recommend people to do is to take these colors and to break them, like break up your fiber and make little piles. So you make a pile of purple and make a pile of pink and make a pile of yellow. And then when you spin them, you spin all the yellow fibers together and then you spin all the pinks together and then you spin all the purples together. And then you might do a chain ply so that way you get this gradation of color between these piles of color. When we dye it in this way, then you don't have to do that. You don't have to divide up your fiber anymore. You can basically spin this straight from end to end. And now, because I only need 50 grams in order to make my skein, and because I want that skein to have that color gradation, the whole color gradation, rather than cutting this braid in half this way and then saying, oh, I have one skein that's this color and one skein that's this color, I decided to strip it vertically or lengthwise in half and then take one half and I'm going to spin that. I'm going to strip that also three times and take the other half and then strip that two times and then make two separate uh, kinds of yarn with this. And each one of those yarns should produce a gradient. One side will be a two ply gradient. One side will be a three ply gradient. There's so many things to be able to do with this one. So this colorway happens to be called twinkle lights. And I don't know if you can kind of tell, but I, I was thinking about, you know, thinking about holiday times and trees and winter and twilight and all those kinds of things. And that's kind of where this twinkle lights idea comes from. It's kind of like, you know, pine trees and, oh, I'm actually looking forward to the holidays this year. <laughs> and then the last one that is a gradient is this one you might have seen. This is a colorway that comes from one of the sock blanks that we do. We do a gradient sock blank in this colorway called Lighthouse. So you can see it goes from orange through to pinks and purples and navies and back to a pink. And uh, yeah, you could strip this and then make this into a gradient yarn as well. So those are the new colorways that we've come out with for fall. And it's just new colors to play with because especially since we have this class coming out about like uh, spinning with intentional color and being able to take different kinds of hand painted colorways and break them up and do different things with them, we thought it would be fun to have more colors to play with. The other thing that we wanted to do is we were talking about this last week. I was telling you about how much I love BFL and especially when I was a beginner and learning how to spin, how much I enjoyed learning how to spin with BFL and also Coridale. Coridale is another fiber that we recommend to new spinners to try. And so, we're going to do some too. So we are going to be coming out with Coridale as well in all of these colorways. And so this is 
One braid that we've done, this colorway happens to be called Tapestry. This is um, a colorway that we've been making for a long, long time. We really love it. Um, but yeah, you can see the fiber already. Without any pre-drafting, it already stays quite fluffy. You can see if I pull some fiber out, it drafts out really beautifully. It's It's got like a nice, you know, sufficient staple length. And just, you know, the feel of this fiber in between your fingers, it's got like a little bit of a, a crinkliness to it. It's got a crinkle feeling so that when, when you're drafting, it feels kind of like crunch, 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 but not in a not soft way. <laughs> that crunch, crunch is just a very satisfying sort of toothiness about this wool that is, uh, makes it really, really lovely and soft. This is really soft still and fun to spin. So if you've been curious about trying Coredale, we are gonna have some and it's gonna be in all of our fun colors as well. So this last idea that I want to share with you is also about this idea of back to school and continuous learning. This is one of the values that we have at Sweet Georgia is this idea of always be learning, learning never ends, learning is, uh, this is a forever habit that we have is to just always focus on constant improvement. One of the things that we talk about at the studio here and about the school and how we're developing content for the school, one of the really important things about this is that how do we get everybody to do it so that that feeling, that experience is in your hands. So it's not just purely in your head, but in your hands. Because once you've actually sat down and done it, then you are much more likely to learn it if you do it um, rather than just saying, oh, I've watched the videos, I watched that, I know how that works. It's one thing to know how it works in your head. It's a whole other thing to actually be able to do it. And so that is what all of our study groups have been about. It's just really get about mobilizing everybody to like get your hands in it and do it. And so right now we have just started the spinning study group and this goes on until the beginning of November. So right now it's just the beginning of September. Um, it is not too late to join at all. You can jump in at any point in time, but basically every week on Thursdays, we're releasing a little bit of uh, content, a little bit of a uh, guidance that leads you towards different areas of the school. So, you know, one week you're gonna be exploring a little bit about worsted drafting methods and worsted fiber preparation. And another week, you're gonna be looking at woolen fiber preparation. How do you make a woolen fiber preparation? How do you do a woolen draft? What does that feel like? How does it work? What does the sample look like at the end of the day? And so um, what we're doing is we're trying to lead everybody week by week by week through different exercises to explore and push at the edges of maybe your spinning skills. And uh, for one of the main goals that I have coming out of this study group is that I wanna develop a system for myself for documenting my work and documenting my spinning. Um, one of the starting points is that in Kim McKenna's class, we've created these worksheets. So this one is called the Handspun Inventory. There's another one here that's gotten like a more detailed version of the Handspun inventory here like the the detailed version but it talks about everything you can list out you know what day did you spin something what's the breed what's the staple length what's the micron count color did you soak it beforehand did you finish it afterwards what's the wraps per inch for the singles what's the angle uh, the twist angle how did you construct the yarn what's the bumps per inch twist per inch uh, the wraps per inch all of these kinds of things that you might want to keep notes about as you're sampling to make a project. And so this is just one way of doing the documentation. And these PDFs are available for download inside the school as well. And we also have from before, these are the ones that we did for Katrina's class. So these are from the spinning up a level class. And this one is about doing little samples uh, with the worsted prep and then with woolen prep with different drafting techniques. And you just pop in a little sample of each skein here as you go. And so I'm gonna be putting these ones into some sheet protectors and then putting them all into this binder here. And I'm gonna start to assemble a bit of a a log or a little bit of a documentation for a lot of the things that I'm spinning right now. So I know that we may not be going back to school right at this moment, but I think that September is always a great time to talk about learning and continuous learning and always uh, looking at how you can improve your skills, your current skills and where you're at. And so if you are at all interested in learning how to spin or improve your spinning, I really encourage you guys to come and join us in the school, especially this month. We're doing just 
tons and tons of spinning. There's going to be spinning together. There's going to be spin ins. Uh, people are going to be spinning on Zoom. All sorts of things are happening. And so I encourage you guys to come and join us for that. Thank you guys so much for being here today to talk about spinning and wool and yarn and hand spun and colors. These are my favorite things, you know? <laughs> so if you guys like this episode, please do hit the like button. If you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. Come here every Friday and we talk about something to do with yarn or color or craft or fiber, basically just all of our favorite things. I would love to hear in the comments below what you are currently interested in learning. What is capturing your attention? What's capturing your interest? What would you like to be able to learn before the end of the year? I would love to hear about all those kinds of things. So thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.